who are the running backs that you should be starting this week and who are some running backs that you should be sitting i'm going to go game by game quickly in this video get through each game talk about the running backs that you should be starting running backs that you should be sitting what the expectations are where i have them ranked all that in this video i make new content like this every single day so make sure you hit that subscribe button so with that being said let's get into the first game the first game on sunday is going to be the new york jets versus the atlanta falcons and this game is in london so it's going to start early you need to make sure you have your lineup set tonight or if you're going to wake up early tomorrow morning wake up make sure that we, we're probably going to have some more inactives tonight that are going to be released usually um adam scheffler usually does that so check to see what guys aren't playing get your lineup set so let's talk about the running backs for this game. So remember, starts early. We need to set our lineup. So first running back, Mike Davis. I like Mike Davis. You can check it out up here above why I love Mike Davis this week. He's only one of four running backs right now to be top 20 in carries and then also at the running back position and also top 10 in targets at the running back position. The other running backs are Najee Harris, Austin Eckler, and Saquon Barkley. Those are the only other running backs. So in really good company right now, it's just we need to get some touchdowns out of them and those are going to come. So right now, Mike Davis, for me, is a top 20 play at the running back position. And now in this game, you also have Calvin Ridley, Russell Gage out. So I think Cordell Patterson's going to play a little bit more than what he has been playing. Right now, his snap share is awful. It's like 44th, I believe, amongst all running backs. So it's terrible right now. He hasn't played over 50% of the snaps. So he's a big sell high guy for me right now. But this week, and really, I think there's a great opportunity to try to sell high, especially with this week with Calvin Ridley out. Like a lot of people are thinking he's going to have a really good week. So this week without Calvin Ridley, Russell Gage, I envision him probably playing a little bit more at the receiving, at the receiver um, snaps there. So I like him this upcoming week. I believe he's a must play as well in a really good matchup against the New York Jets. The New York Jets right now are giving up the most fantasy points to the running back position. So I like Cordell Patterson. Now let's go over to the Jets side where we have Michael Carter. And really Michael Carter is the only one that I have interest in in this game from the Jets side. Last weekend, he played over 50% of the snaps. He also saw 50%, 56% of the running back touches in this backfield and all the goal line work. In a game that they won against Atlanta, this game should be close. So I expect Michael Carter to once again lead the backfield. But for me, he's outside the top 30 at the running back position, more of a flex play. Like if you're desperate and you really need somebody, he's not that bad. He would be the only guy that I would want out of this backfield. Ty Johnson, there's no interest, sit him. And Tevin Coleman, sit him. So the only little bit of interest is in Michael Carter. And let's get into the next game. The next game here is going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Denver Broncos. And this game is going to be ugly. Right now, you have an over-under of 39.5 points, which is the lowest of the weekend. So don't expect a whole lot of points to be scored in this game. So let's take a look at the running back position. And really, Najee Harris, for me, is still a top-10 guy. Anytime you have a guy that's playing all the snaps, in the past two weeks, he's seen 26 targets for the Pittsburgh Steelers. 26 targets. Like, you're starting that guy every single week. I don't care if he rushes for 40 yards this week. I don't care about that. In PPR leagues, your receptions are much more valuable than your rushing attempts. And Najee Harris is an absolute must play still in a really tough matchup against the Denver Broncos. He's a top 10 play, so make sure he's in your lineups. The next guy is going to be Javante Williams. And I have Javante Williams, Melvin Gordon here on the other side of the ball. Javante Williams last week outsnapped Melvin Gordon for the first time this season. So that's good. We'd like to see that. But he was still outtouched by Melvin Gordon. Really, these two guys, I currently have Javante Williams at running back 30 and Melvin Gordon, I believe, at like running back 33. So guys that I would play over them, like Damian Williams, I'd feel more comfortable. Zach Moss, obviously. Like those are guys that I would definitely be playing over these guys. These guys are kind of like RB3s in my opinion. So I don't have a whole lot of interest there. But if you need to play somebody and you have maybe both of them, Javante Williams would be my first option, then Melvin Gordon. So that's the second game. The next game is going to be the Green Bay Packers versus the Cincinnati Bengals. And this game right now has the third highest over-under of the weekend. So expect some points to be scored in this game. And let's take a look at the running back position. We have first, we have Aaron Jones. Uh, Aaron Jones right now is a top five running back. I mean, you're starting him every single week. I don't care what the matchup is. He needs to be in your lineups every single week. So Aaron Jones, absolute must start. A.J. Dillon saw a little bit of an extended role last week. Now, I don't know if it was because, you know, they're beating up on the Steelers. 
Um, also Aaron Jones kind of was a little bit injured, a little bit banged up, and maybe that's why he played a little bit more this past weekend. I want to see if this is going to continue. I do think that he's a pretty solid player, to be honest with you. So I do think that he might continue to see a little bit more work each and every week. Aaron Jones will still 100% be, be the guy. And in the red zone, he's 100% the guy. Aaron Jones is. But A.J. Dillon could be a little bit more of a, a flex-worthy play going forward if his role continues to expand. But this week, don't start him. Uh, Joe Mixon. Now, this is probably going to be one of the most asked questions of the weekend is what to do with Joe Mixon. Now, obviously, if he's ruled out, like, don't, obviously, you're not playing him. But right now, they're saying that he may play in some capacity this upcoming weekend. So what exactly to do with Joe Mixon? If he's going to play in some capacity, I mean, I need to see what exactly that may look like as we get closer to the game. And thankfully, this game is at one o'clock, so we'll know early what exactly is going on. But for me, I don't have a whole lot of interest in Joe Mixon. If he's going to play in some capacity, I envision him like kind of what happened last week with Dalvin Cook, where he played like 50% of the snaps is probably what's going to happen with Joe Mixon. So the explosiveness isn't going to really be there. And he's somebody that I really want to avoid. Currently, I'm going to have him ranked outside my top 25 at the running back position. So once again, we need to see what exactly are all the full details. Maybe he's going to give it a go. Maybe he ends up being ruled out actually before the game. So right now, if that's the case, if he does play this weekend, no interest in Samaj P. Ryan and Chris Evans. Now, if he doesn't play this weekend, if he's actually ruled out, Samaj P. Ryan for me is a almost like top 25 play. I have him a little bit outside the top 25. I'd still rather play like Damian Williams this upcoming week, Zach Moss, like those kind of guys definitely over Samaj P. Ryan, but he's going to see some touches. I expect Chris Evans to probably be a little bit involved in the passing game more than Samaj P. Ryan, so he's going to limit his upside a little bit. And really, Samaj P. Ryan's kind of an average player. And I feel like they're going to really rely on the passing attack more than the rushing attack if that's the case with Joe Mixon out. So not a whole lot of interest in P. Ryan if Mixon can't go, and definitely no interest in him if Mixon does go. So that's the third game. The next game is going to be the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Carolina Panthers. And right now you have the Carolina Panthers as three point favorites in this game. So let's take a look at the running back situation right now. And you have CMC who's not likely to play. He's currently doubtful. I don't think he's going to play this week. So if you have CMC, have another option to go. I think next week he'll be back though. Next week he should be back. But right now he is out. Well, not out officially, but is likely to be out. If he does play, I would fire him up though. If he does play. Next, we're going to have Chuba Hubbard, who Chuba Hubbard will take over the lead back of this offense. Now, I know last week wasn't great. It was a little bit disappointing if you had Chuba Hubbard. Rodney Smith looked like he was the passing down option for this offense. You also have Sam Darnold rushing two touchdowns. That's not going to happen every single week. I expect Chuba Hubbard to be more involved in this offense this week with them being the favorites. So for me, he's a top 20 play at the running back position. Next, we're going to have Miles Sanders. And it's been disappointing for Miles Sanders. And to be honest with you, I didn't really like him for this reason heading into the season. I talked about it. This is not a very good team. This is a coach that likes to use a committee approach. Um, they have Kenneth Gamewell, who's definitely involved in the passing game, which, once again, we know you want receptions in your PPR leagues. They're much more valuable. And right now, through the past two weeks, Miles Sanders has an inexcusable 15 attempt. Well, not 15 attempts, but 15 total touches. That He needs to see more than that. That's just, it's not going to be viable in fantasy football to have a guy in two weeks average basically, you know, seven, eight touches a game. It's just not going to happen, especially when half of those are receptions. So he's just not seeing the work right now. And in a game that they're going to be behind again, what like should be playing from behind, expect Kenneth Gamewell to have a better game. Right now, Kenneth Gamewell is scoring more points than Miles Sanders. Kenneth Gamewell has more points than Miles Sanders does right now which is very disappointing if you drafted Miles Sanders. So right now I have Miles Sanders currently outside my top 25 by one spot. He's currently RB 26 and I have Kenneth Gamewell. He's not inside the top 25, but he is a play in PPR leagues. I would start him in deeper leagues. I would start him as a flex spot. If you need a flex spot this week, Miles Sanders is a borderline start for me. He's very close. Like obviously he's higher than Kenneth Gamewell. So I would be starting him but I don't feel great about it. I feel like he's in the situation where if you drafted him, you have to be playing him. Uh, but Kenneth Gainwell is a flex spot for me. So that's the next game. The next game is going to be the Minnesota Vikings versus Detroit Lions. And right now you have the Minnesota Vikings favored by 10 points. 
And this is a 49 and a half over under, which is one of the higher of the whole weekend. So expect a lot of points and really 10 and a half is a lot of points. To, in my opinion, that's a lot of points. So, but let's go ahead and look at the running back position. So this is probably going to be one of the most asked questions this weekend, what to do with Dalvin cook. And this is my take on Dalvin cook. I don't like Dalvin cook. If he plays, I really don't like Dalvin cook. We saw it last week. He played under 50 percent of the snaps didn't really practice this whole week he did get uh, a practice in on friday so he's still obviously banged up and i expect him to play about the same amount that he did this past weekend and expect alexander madison to be involved really i if you have a better option i would go with them but chances are you you probably don't have a better option he's still a top 25 running back for me um so if you don't have a guy that's currently like outside the top 25, like still fire up Dalvin cook, but definitely temper your expectations. I wish he would just be ruled out of this game because it would make it a lot easier for fantasy and just get him healthier. Right next. We have Alexander Madison. And if Dalvin cook is ruled out of this game, he's a very high end RB two. He would be my RB 13 for this week. If Dalvin cook were to miss this game, um, if he doesn't miss this game, now you put, really Alexander Madison for me right next to like Javante Williams in the RB 30 range, a little bit outside the top 30 Melvin Gordon range, like with those guys right there. So I don't like him nearly as much. Obviously if Dalvin cook were to miss, I think he's flex viable in a game that they are obviously favored to win by 10 points. So they should be running the ball a decent amount and Dalvin cook is not hundred percent. So he's going to see some work. So Alexander Madison, that's where I would rank him next. We have Deandre Swift absolute must start. He's a top 10 running back for me this week in PPR leagues. You need to be playing him. Who cares that he just had 16 rushing yards. Who cares? Once again, all we care about are the receiving upside for him. And this team, like last week, I was watching the game a little bit and they turned the ball over like three times in the red zone last week and Jared Goff missed him. Well, he was pressured a little bit, but Deandre Swift should have had a touchdown. He overthrew him a little bit, but Deandre Swift absolute must play. And then last one, we have Jamal Williams who Jamal Williams for me, he's in that range with Alexander Madison right now. If you know, if Dalvin cook does play like Alexander Madison's around the RB 30 range right now, that's where Jamal Williams is. I would probably go with Jamal Williams or I would go with Alexander Madison over Jamal Williams, but it's really close. Javante Williams for me, I would play over Jamal Williams, but it's close. I do like, He's, he's a flex option this upcoming week. So that's this game. The next game is going to be the Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Tennessee Titans. And this is one of the higher scoring games of the entire weekend as well. Over under is 48 and a half. You have currently the Titans as four and a half point favorites. So let's take a look at the running backs. And obviously Derek Henry, you're absolutely starting him. He's the number one running back in fantasy football right now. So fire him up. He should be RB1 this upcoming week. And then James Robinson for me is a must start as well. He's currently inside my top 12. He's currently RB11 in fantasy football right now. So if you've been watching Aspire Sports, I've been telling people to go out and trade for James Robinson. He's still, he's going to be, I think, more of an RB2, like a high-end RB2 for the rest of the season but he's going to be the lead back in this offense and an offense that's going to get better as the season progresses. Last week, they look pretty good. Expect James Robinson to have a solid game in this game. So James Robinson, he's a top 12 play at the running back position as well. Play both of these guys in this game. The next game is going to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Miami Dolphins. And right now you have an over under of 48 points. And currently the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are favored by 10 points. So a lot of rushing attempts for this offense, I believe. And right now you have Leonard Fournette. He is inside the top 20 at the running back position for me this week. Last week, we saw him play 80%, 82% of this team snaps. He had 23 touches and was very good. This upcoming week, you're going to have Giovanni Bernard be back. I believe he's going to play this week, but that's okay because this team, once again, they're favored by a lot. So they're not going to have to throw playing from behind a whole lot. So expect Leonard Fournette to be really involved in this offense against a Miami team right now. That's giving up the fourth most running fourth, most points to the running back position. Ronald Jones for me is borderline droppable. I mean, it depends on who you're picking up, but he's just not, he's not involved in this offense at all. So if you want to be able to pick up somebody, go ahead. He's not worth rostering right now. I know he scored a touchdown, but he played on 17% of this team snaps 17%. And that was without Giovanni Bernard. He, he doesn't need to be rostered right now. In my opinion, if you need to pick up somebody next, we're going to go to the Miami side where 
Miles Gaskin is outside the top 40. I mean, last week he was out snapped, out touched by Malcolm Brown. And now this is a brutal matchup against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a game that they should be playing from behind. They're not going to get anything going on the ground. They're going to have to throw the ball a whole lot. I don't like Miles Gaskin and Malcolm Brown for me. Once again, outside the, t- I don't care that he played more snaps, saw more touches last week. He's outside the top 40 at the running back position for me as well. These are two guys that I would sit. The only one that I feel really good about starting this week from this game is going to be Leonard Fournette. So that's the Miami and Tampa Bay game. The next game, we're going to have the New England Patriots versus the Houston Texans. And currently this game is 39 total points. And the Patriots are currently eight point favorites in this game. So let's look at the running backs right now. For me, the only guy I have any interest in is Damian Harris. And for me, he's a top 15 back at the running back position this week. Last week, we saw him have a season high in snaps and a season high in route participation for this team with James White out. For me, that's really encouraging. I know that the last two games have been really tough for him, but those are two really tough matchups. The Houston Texans are currently giving up the ninth most fantasy points, eighth most fantasy points to the running back position. So fire up Damian Harris this week. He's a top 15 play for me. Brandon Bolden, not a whole lot of interest in like full point PPR leagues, I guess, like as a desperation type of flex guy. But with them winning, I just don't envision them having a large role for this team. Damian Harris will be the guy. J.J. Taylor fumbled. And no interest there. Really no interest in any of these running backs for the Houston Texans. The only one that I would have a tiny bit of interest in would be David Johnson, just because I envision this team losing and having to throw the ball. And he's their receiving back. So David Johnson would be the only one. Other than that, no interest in any of these other running backs. So really, the only guy on the whole list is Damian Harris. You need to be starting him this week. The last 1 o'clock game is going to be the Washington football versus the New Orleans Saints. And right now, the over-under is 43.5. You have the spread right now. The Saints are favored in this game by 2.5 points. So let's take a look at the running back position. Right now, you have Antonio Gibson. He's questionable heading into this week because of a shin injury. And now we learn that it's a stress fracture that he's been dealing with and he's playing through. So right now with Antonio Gibson as well, he's been... He hasn't been bad by any means. He's a top 20 running back, but in terms of where you drafted him, he's been a little bit disappointing and largely due to his receiving upside in this offense, which is just not there. He doesn't play in third downs, not the team's running back in the two minute offense. And you can say whatever you want to say, which I'm going to say that it makes no sense because he's a converted wide receiver coming out of college. He's six foot, 220 pounds and runs a four, three 40, a four, four, 40, a four, three, nine 40. So he's fast, he's explosive, he's good, he showed it. Yet you're going to play J.D. McKissick, who's a 190-pound running back, who is who runs a 4.640, and he sees more, he has more red zone attempts than Antonio Gibson. More red zone attempts than Antonio Gibson. What is that garbage, okay? For me, Antonio Gibson right now is a sell high guy. I would try to sell him before this game. I don't think he's going to have a good game. He's currently outside the top 20 at the running back position for me this week. I, he's a low end, a touchdown dependent RB2 for me this week. And unless we see a massive change in his usage, he's just going to be that way the whole season. He's going to be disappointing for where he was drafted and what you expected to see out of him. J.D. McKissick for me is right around the Melvin Gordon range. He's right now, I believe, like RB36, somewhere around there for me. He's almost, I believe he's RB20, what is he, RB30 right now in fantasy football. So in PPR formats, he's definitely startable as a flex option this week. Uh, There's other guys that I'd rather have, but J.D. McKissick is definitely flex viable this week. And then lastly, uh, lastly, we have Alvin Kamara. I'm just going to keep going, but we have Alvin Kamara right now who... Alvin Kamara has been has been solid, right? He's been okay. But in terms of where you drafted him, has been disappointing, largely in part to the reception category right now. He's just seeing a bunch of work as a running back. 24 carries, 26 carries. But where are the receptions that we're normally seeing out of Alvin Kamara right now? So that right now needs a change. Otherwise, he's not going to return value for where you drafted him. He's not going to be a top five running back. He's more of a back end RB1 if he's not going to receive that receiving potential. And that's why we drafted Alvin Kamara where we drafted him is because of that receiving potential. So right now it's not quite there. And he's still a start for me right now, but he's getting to the point where it's a little disappointing for where he was definitely drafted. So that's this game for this week.
The next game is going to be the Cleveland Browns versus the Los Angeles Chargers. And this game should be pretty good as well. Right now, the over-under is 47. You currently have the Chargers as two-and-a-half-point favorites in this game. Should be a good game. So let's talk about the running backs. Really, you should be starting all these running backs for me. They're top 15 plays. Right now, you have the Browns offense, one of the better offenses in terms of rushing the football, going against the Chargers, who are currently giving up the fourth most rushing yards in the NFL right now. So Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt should have a pretty solid game. Both of them for me. Nick Chubb is a top 10 running back for this week. Kareem Hunt is a top 15 running back for me this week. So they're both starts for me. And then Austin... Austin Eckler, he's a top 10 running back. I mean, right now he's RB2 in fantasy football. He's a stud. You're playing him every single week. He's matchup proof. This is a little bit of a tougher matchup, but still fire him up. He's a top 10 play at the running back position. Start all the running backs in this game. So that's the Chargers, Cleveland Browns game. The next game is going to be another 4 o'clock game. we got the Las Vegas Raiders versus the Chicago Bears. Right now the over-under is 45 points. Currently, you have the Las Vegas Raiders as five and a half point favorites in this game. So let's take a look at the running back situation. First, we have Peyton Barber. Right now, he's questionable with a mild turf toe injury. I don't know if he's going to play. I think he's probably going to play, but really no interest in him. Next, we're going to have Josh Jacobs. A lot of interest in Josh Jacobs this upcoming week. And if we look back towards to last year, Josh Jacobs has massive splits in games that they win and games that they lose, which makes sense because he's not really involved a whole lot in the passing game. Although last week, Last week, he did see five targets. So is that something that's going to continue going forward? We have to see. But Josh Jacobs, for me, is a top 20 running back right now for this week because, once again, they're favored to win. And in games that they won last year, he was RB4 in points per game. Games that they lost, he was outside the top 25. So I envision them winning this game. It is a little bit of a tougher matchup against Chicago this week. But still, fire up Josh Jacobs if you have him. And Kenyon Drake right now is just, he's borderline droppable in fantasy football right now. Uh, when... When you have Josh Jacobs out, this team leaned heavily on Peyton Barber. So for me, Kenya Drake is borderline droppable right now. Um, I would not start him this week. Damian Williams is a start. He's not a top 20 running back just because I want to see exactly how this goes with him. It is a really solid matchup, but I want to see what the snaps are with him and Herbert. Right now, he's a he's almost a top 20 running back. Currently, I have him as RB23, so he's almost there. But there's just some other guys that I'd rather play, like Leonard Fournette, Damian Harris, if you have him. Chuba Hubbard, I'd rather play over Damian Williams, but I do like Damian Williams this week. He's a top 25 play at the running back position, and if you have him, you're probably starting him this week. Next, we're going to have Khalil Herbert. Now, I wouldn't have any interest in playing him, but I do want to see what the snaps look like for this team. Maybe he's going to be involved a little bit, maybe in passing down. And then also you have with Damian Williams, he struggled to stay healthy throughout his career. So if anything were to happen to Damian Williams, Khalil Herbert would now be in a position to lead this backfield in touches every single week. So he's somebody that I would just put on the end of my bench if you needed like a bench spot heading into this week in case anything were to happen to Damian Williams, who already got banged up a little bit. It was just a thigh bruise, I'm pretty sure, but still was a little bit banged up and has had trouble staying healthy. So when no interest in starting him this week, but just see what happens. Keep him on your bench. We'll see. So that's the Bears and Las Vegas Raiders game. The next game is going to be the Arizona Cardinals versus the San Francisco 49ers. The over-under is 40 and a half points. And currently you have the Arizona Cardinals as five point favorites in this one. So we're looking we're going to look at the 49ers running back situation because I think a lot of people are going to ask questions about this as well. And right now, this is I won't lie, it's a little confusing to me. I don't know what to really make of this situation right now. I think Elijah Mitchell is going to be the lead back in this offense. Now, I could be totally wrong. Trey Sermon, he played de decently well last week in a really good matchup against Seattle. Um, had almost 100 yards, so it was encouraging. And if it were the week prior and Elijah Mitchell was coming back, I believe 100% Elijah Mitchell would be the lead back in this offense. And I still think he's going to be the lead, lead back. But right now, I currently have these guys as like Arby's 28 and 30, and like around that range, right there with Javante Williams. Um, ahead of Melvin Gordon right now, both of these guys are. But I'm a little skeptical of what to do, and really I don't feel comfortable playing these guys. I would definitely play Elijah Mitchell over Trey Sermon, but Trey Sermon I do think is viable in, flex, like in your flex spot. So both these guys I think have value this week, but I would want Elijah Mitchell over Trey Sermon. Now let's go to the other side where we have Chase Edmonds. In your PPR leagues, he is a top 20 back in fantasy football right now, and that's despite not scoring a touchdown. 
And why is he a top 20 back? Well, because of your receptions. Receptions are more valuable, once again, than your rushing attempts. So I don't care that he's not seeing a whole lot of work as a rushing or as a running back. Where last week he saw 12 carries, but he's seeing a bunch of work in the receiving game. So he's going to be a top 20 back every single week for that reason. He's a top 20 guy for me. He's a must start. And then James Conner right now. I said it earlier in the season that you're going to have James Conner kind of take over the Kenyon Drake role. Where he's going to see carries. They're not going to be really efficient. But the main thing that we're looking for are, is his work around the goal line. Which the past two weeks, he scored four touchdowns. So that's great. A game against San Francisco that they're favored. There should be a decent amount of points. I do believe that he's a viable flex option this week. He's going to be touchdown dependent, where if he doesn't score a touchdown, chances are he's going to get you like five points this week. So if he gets a touchdown, he'll be a solid flex option for you this week. He's right there in the mix with Melvin Gordon in that range, like RB 34, 35 range is currently where I have him ranked. So... That's this game. Let's go to the next one. The last four o'clock game is going to be the Dallas Cowboys versus the New York Giants. And right now, this is projected to be one of the highest scoring games at 52 points. Total points for this game and seven point favorites for the Dallas Cowboys. So the first guy that we're going to take a look at is going to be Ezekiel Elliott. He needs to be in your starting lineups for me this week. He's RB2. And remember back in week one when everybody was panicking because Zeke played against the toughest run defense in the NFL and had like three Three points in that game. Zeke is fine. Zeke is the RB1. He'll be the RB1. He's playing on an elite snap rate. He's running routes. Everything is there for Zeke. Last week, he had 143 rushing yards. The dude's a stud. You're, you're starting him every single week. He's a top five running back for the rest of the season. Next, we're going to have Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard, for me, I don't... I don't like him as a flex play, and here's why. Like, Tony Pollard is playing on about 30% of the snaps. Yes, he's seeing some work, and if he sees about 10 touches a game, I guess that puts him in the category of flex, but all, the past two weeks, it's been carries. And once again, we want to see receptions more than carries, especially for a running back that's only playing about 30% of your snaps. You want to see him involved in the passing game. And right now, that's just not the case. It was early in the season. I expect, really, the Cowboys to have a good... A good game on the ground this week. So for me, he's not really a flex play. He's more RB40 range for me. So there's better options out there personally. And then let's go to Saquon Barkley, who Saquon was an absolute stud last week, was so good against a really tough matchup against New Orleans. He showed the old Saquon, and you're firing him up every single week now. He's a top 10 option. He's fully back. He's playing on 80% of the team snaps, one of the highest snap rates in the NFL at the running back position. He's a stud. You need to be playing him. So Saquon, Zeke, absolute must starts this week. The next game is going to be a Sunday night game versus the Kansas City Chiefs and Buffalo Bills. It's going to be a really exciting game. Currently, this game is projected to be the highest scoring game of the entire weekend with 56 and a half points. Currently, you have the Kansas City Chiefs as three-point favorites in this game. So Zach Moss, since his healthy scratch in week one and week two onward, has been a top 10 running back in fantasy football. He's currently seeing the fourth most rushing attempts inside the red zone right now. He's currently fourth, or he's tied for fourth with three rushing touchdowns in that span as well. He's scoring touchdowns. He's seeing the ball where it counts, and that's what you want. Against the Kansas City Chiefs right now, the Kansas City Chiefs are currently giving up the fifth most points to the running back position. For me, he's a borderline top 20 play. He's a top 25 play at the running back position. Fire him up if you have him. Feel good about it. And what should be, uh, once again, one of the highest scoring games, if not the highest scoring game of the weekend. Also, Devin Singletary. Now, for me, he's more of a flex play for me. Zach Moss is an RB2. Devin Singletary, for me, is more of an RB3, like low in RB3 uh, flex play this week. I currently have him ranked again. Once again, like around Melvin Gordon range, like RB36 in that range. I do think he's viable if you need a flex play this week. And once again, what should be the highest the highest scoring game of the entire weekend. So just having pieces of this offense will be great for you. And Devin Singletary, it's not like he hasn't been involved. He just hasn't scored touchdowns where if he scored a touchdown, you know, the past week or two, he would definitely have a really solid fantasy days. So uh, Devin Singletary is def definitely flex worthy. And then for me, CEH, you're still starting him, but CEH to me is outside the top 20. So if you have better options for CEH, I would play them. This is a really tough matchup. Right now, the Buffalo Bills are giving up the fourth fewest points to the running back position. Once again, this should be a really high-scoring game, so he might fall into the end zone. And really, I think he's going to need to score a touchdown to have to return value for you this week. He's a touchdown-dependent RB2 for me this week. A really tough matchup. So, 
Kansas City Chiefs versus the Buffalo Bills. The last game is going to be the Baltimore Ravens Monday night game versus the Indianapolis Colts. Right now, the over-under is at 46 points, and you have the Baltimore Ravens as seven-point favorites. So we have the running back position, which right now Latavius Murray, for me, is like in the Miles Sanders range, RB 25, 26, 27 range, like around there. I don't have a whole lot of interest in Latavius Murray. Now, he is this team's leading runner. Um, last week, you had Tyson Williams. He was a healthy scratch for some reason. And then Latavius Murray, you know, plods for three yards per carry, which that's what he's going to do this season. He's just going to plod away and he's going to, you know, score some touchdowns here and there, but he's going to have a low yards per carry. So whatever this Baltimore team wants to do, not use Tyson Williams, who's averaging six yards per carry and looks explosive. Hey, is the only running back on the roster right now that has a catch. To me, it makes absolutely no sense. I don't know why he was a healthy scratch. It makes no sense. But hey, Baltimore, you do you. So Latavius for Murray, for me, is outside the top 25. In a tough matchup right now, you have the Baltimore, or not the Baltimore uh, Ravens. You have the Indianapolis Colts, who are currently giving up the eighth fewest points to the running back position. So it's a tough matchup. And then Tyson Williams, I mean, you can't start him. I, he's basically droppable but i would like to see if he's a if he plays this week and if he plays how much does he play next you're gonna have jonathan taylor for me he's a high-end rb2 he's gonna be high-end rb2 every single week on a team that likes to run the football now they're gonna be in a situation where they're not gonna really be able to run the football but the baltimore ravens right now are averaging a rushing touchdown per game on the season so jonathan taylor Maybe he scores this week. He makes his day valuable. So Jonathan Taylor, for me, is an RB2. You should start him if you have him. And then Nye Hines. This game kind of smells like more of a Nye Hines type of game because, once again, they're seven-point underdogs. So Nye Hines should play a decent amount here. Uh, but I still have him, like, in the range of, like, J.D. McKissick. So, like, RB40, like, RB38, that kind of range is where I currently have Nye Hines. So in PPR leagues, he's a flex option. Otherwise, if you have better options, go ahead and sit them. So that does it. If you enjoy this content, make sure you smash that like button. Also, subscribe to the channel. Appreciate you watching the video. If you have any other start and sit questions, ask it down below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.